Hello there. What I'm working on now is uh, doing the bevel, the edge bevels on uh, this uh, this body, which is this is one of my new SGTO models, which has a beveled edge detail. So I'm sure in the factory you probably do this with a uh, either a CNC machine or a template uh, and. Uh, an angled cutter on a on a pin router, but uh, my bevel detail is not the same angle all the way round, so that doesn't really that doesn't really work. So, short of a CNC machine, which I don't have, I'll be doing all the carving by hand. So, hopefully, you can see uh, I've got a template which marks out this line here and that line there and that's the top edge of the bevel and then as hopefully you can see these lines on the side and they transition into these points here and here and there's a similar line there so effectively I've got to remove everything between those two lines so to do that, I clamp it onto the edge of the bench and uh, get at it with the rasps and the sandpaper and the scrapers and uh, away we go. So I've actually made a little bit of a, a start on this one because uh, I got a new rasp yesterday and I was excited to try it. So uh, let's, uh, let's do it for real. So I've got my guidelines here on the edge and on the face and uh, I need to uh, tack it with the, with the rasp. I need to be a little bit cautious with this because this is a quite a lot of figure in this mahogany so the grain is sort of bit irregular so just got to make sure you cut it in the right direction. So it's really just a matter of constantly changing the the angle of the of the tool so you're taking off keeping that the, the, the place you're cutting fairly flat and slowly bringing it down so it reaches the line at the same time so otherwise you end up with a sort of a, a rounded face and then you've got to try and take some out the middle so we're trying to keep it flat all the time it's a little easier I think at this stage what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a glove on my left hand because this is very sharp and if I slip I'm going to uh, give, myself a, give myself a mischief. There we go, that's a bit safer. keep an eye on the, on the line because it's very easy to get, get carried away and go way and find you've gone too far which is not a good thing right that's um, probably three quarters of the way there so I'll just move it a little bit Take a little bit more off here and around there, and then constantly keep juggling it so we get closer and closer. It's going to take a little while, but uh, I've, got, I've got two to do, and invariably, with all of these jobs, the first one takes a lot longer than the second one. By the time you get to the second one, you've got your eye in, and uh, it happens a lot quicker. So, uh, 
There we go, it's effectively four sections to carve, front and back at the top, and the uh, front and back of the, of the lower edge. So, uh, right, let's, um, let's move that and do that, uh, that top piece. There we go. Be very careful here because this, this line on the edge tapers up here. So I really can't attack this too, too vigorously. The beauty of this this rasp is this is a, <clears throat> a handmade rasp rather than a machine made rasp so it results in a slightly uneven pitch of the teeth which might sound like a bad thing but for this is actually a very very good thing because it rather than cutting the same way each time which can create uh, channels and tracks which the thing would then follow every time it cuts slightly unevenly so you end up with a much smoother cut um, and it really is a wonderful thing to use so uh, I haven't always used one of these I've, uh, I've got a big an old brutal thing like this which also packs away quite uh, quite merrily but uh, this can this can in certain positions not be quite as uh, not be quite as easy but uh, it's also slightly blunt as well this one so it doesn't to move timber anyway as quickly so uh, right that's uh, that's that roughed in move it again and uh, we'll do this section. That's it. Again, this this line here is tapering upwards, so I need to be a little bit cautious. Here we're, uh, we're cutting into the end grain, so we'll tend to dig in. So. Very, very light pressure, or almost no pressure, really. Just let the sharpness of the tool do the work. Right, that's that roughed in. So, what I'll now do is inspect it, see where I'm close to the line, where I'm not, and just gradually finesse it down to the, uh, the final dimensions and we'll probably at some point move on to uh, finer rasp and various sanding blocks uh, which will help finesse the shape as we get closer to the line. So I'll show you a little bit of that later but for now I'm going to carry on hacking it off. So now I've roughed it in roughed all the bevels in with the coarse rasp so I'm close to the line but but not right on it so now that rough one takes off so much wood I can't go any further so I'll go for a finer rasp and sanding blocks and uh, take it down a little bit closer so that's the next stage um, starting now. It seems sensible to me to start on the back that way if I muck anything up through cat handedness it won't show. I need to be a little bit more cautious with this so as I'm, as I'm right handed it's easier to work start at the left hand end and, and then sort of work round that it seems to and I can see where I'm going as opposed to covering over where I'm going with my left hand so I'll start this with a, this finer rasp and just bring it a little bit closer to the line. Yeah, 
aim with this is to go almost up to the line, pretty much just touching the line, and then I'll do the final bit of shaping with sanding blocks and scrapers. As due to this being a very fine tool, it only actually cuts in one place, so it's difficult to get a nice even curve, which is much easier with a, a sanding block or a, you know, a soft block of some description. You know, like, say, it's like that, a little piece of, uh, piece of cork with uh, some sandpaper stuck to it. You get a curve like that and you'll cut over a much wider area um, and get a nice smooth curve. But we'll get to that later. So for now, I'll uh, keep following this round. <laughs> coming on. So we're close to the line there and we're down pretty much on the line there. So that's pretty good. Sanding. Last little bit. And so that's that section, pretty close. We're pretty close to the line both ways round. So I'll carry on, do that side and then um, the top edge and then the, the front them both to the same side and then we'll finesse them a little bit more with some sanding blocks. So it's um, stage, first part of stage two done. So onwards. Now I've got it taken down to the line uh, all the way around with the rasps. Uh, the final stage is to just finesse it a little bit with, uh, with some sanding blocks. I've got a few different little sanding blocks here with various grits, mostly flat ones, um, but a couple of little slightly curved ones, uh, a flexible bit of cork there with some sandpaper on, um, and various grits at this stage. This is, um, this is almost like a rasp. This is 36 grit. In case I need to take a bit more off, um, that's quite good actually for removing a lot of a lot of wood. I probably won't use that very much at this point, but I've got uh, 80 grit here and 120, and I'll just go around tidy it up, make sure it's all okay, uh, and then we'll move on to the next stage, which will be putting the radiuses around these little sections here, and it will get blended in. But most of that will be done in the final sanding process when the guitar's together. There's no point in final sanding the body at this stage. Um, because I've still got to sand the neck and you know, it all needs to be done at, at the same time. So uh, for now, we'll just uh, tidy this up a little bit and we'll be done. Normally I would put a mask on at this point, but as I'm talking, um, I won't. But, um, let's, uh, let's have a look at this. All right, we're pretty close there. <laughs> I am sanding across the grain here, which is normally a bit of a no-no, but essentially at this point I'm simply shaping. Uh, it will get sanded 
uh, final sanding will all go with the grain, which is a which is a fiddly process. But um, at the moment, I'm not worried about that because I'm I'm merely shaking. That's good. Now this um, this is uh, this is mahogany. This body, which is very even and uh, even in density, so sands very very easily. Some woods, um, swamp ash, older sometimes, you can have hard sections and soft sections, and you can very easily sand ridges and low spots into it. So you have to use a much a broader sanded block like that to. Uh, to bridge it over those. Um, I'll, I'll do that just a little bit. Except for this, I can get away without doing that too much because uh, it's very even in density. Uh, there's one here I did earlier, which is uh, an older one, and uh, you can see where you've got these lines. Here, is, the wood goes soft and hard and soft and hard, so you can easily get ridges in it, so you have to be very careful there to sand, so you get a nice flat surface. Um, depends which way the grain's going, it wasn't so bad on the back, but there, it's, uh, it takes a little bit more attention. But, uh, but this is, uh, is pretty easy, really. So I'll just finish off that last little, little bit. I made quite a good job with the rasp on this. Very close, pretty close to the line all the way around. See, actually, I've got a little tiny low bit there where I've. <coughs> so I just need to work either side of that. Good. And as long as, as long as that line there is nice and smooth, that's what I'm looking for. Well, I think that's good for that bit. So I'll carry on, repeat the same process on the other four carved edges, and um, that'll be it for a while on the bodies. Um, the final, there'll be one more edge process. If she's putting her radiuses uh, on there, then the final blending in uh, will all be done when it's all glued together as a guitar. So uh, once I get to this stage, that'll be it for for now. Here it is. Happy days. Mm -hmm.